in preparation for this, I was describing myself as very normal, <laughs> very ordinary, very plain. I've received plenty of emails about coronavirus conspiracies, from false claims suggesting that 5G is linked to the virus, to the idea that the whole thing is a hoax. And this one, making misleading claims about Bill Gates and vaccinations. Hi Mariana, I've just read your latest report on the BBC website. I don't, I don't see, see any, any mention, mention of, of coronavirus of patents in your reporting, nor Purbright research funded by the Bill Gates Foundation. This email is from Simon, and he recommended addressing conspiracy theories based in fact. So, there is no patent for the new coronavirus that causes COVID-19. The confusion about this comes because there is a patent for a different coronavirus that affects livestock like poultry and pigs. And this patent is owned by the Purbright Institute in the UK. The link with the Gates Foundation is real. It does fund the Purbright's work in other fields, but not in connection with its work on coronaviruses. Simon is a dad of three from Shropshire. He also likes looking into conspiracy theories on YouTube. So I invited Professor Jovan Byford to meet Simon and talk about how to tackle conspiracies. First, it's important to establish a basis of understanding. The word theory as part of that suggests to me that it's just some, from someone's imagination as opposed to something that's been researched and can be researched quite heavily. So I think that that can lead to the, uh, a, a theory being dismissed out of hand. I think you're right that in, in everyday language the term conspiracy theory is very often used as a term of disparagement. However, uh, at least in, in my work and I think in a lot of scholarly work, the term is reserved for a particular types of explanation. And these are explanations that assume that sort of visible reality is just a cover-up for some sinister plot. Secondly, avoid sweeping dismissals and saying you're wrong. Bill Gates has got a vested interest in this because he's mm -hmm, sort of mm -hmm. very heavily into the sort of vaccination mm -hmm, programs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I just followed that up into sort of right, Herbright. Right. Yeah, I, I didn't realise that you could patent a virus. Mm -hmm, I didn't realise mm -hmm, you could patent mm -hmm. a vaccine. Well, I suppose mm -hmm. you can patent a vaccine to a virus, yeah, but it yeah. seemed that it was already in place. Right, right. And I don't know whether or not that was part of misinformation. Thirdly, present facts and research. Try to do this neutrally. Make sure they have valid information. So when I googled coronavirus and patent, um, the first page of hits was overwhelmingly various fact-checking websites where uh, those claims about the patents, the claims about Bill Gates's kind of various talks are very forensically kind of dissected. And I'm just wondering whether you accept that actually maybe it could be that mainstream media doesn't give credence to those views because they, those views have been fact-checked fact and they don't stand to scrutiny. Fourthly, try to get to the bottom of the often legitimate concern at the heart of the conspiracy. Conspiracy theories, what makes them so appealing and, and popular uh, is that they, all, they are very often based on small kernels of truth. So yes, a coronavirus has been patented yes, by the institution that you mentioned, yes, Bill Gates funded that institution, but what very often happens is that these uh, kernels of truth at some point lead to what the American historian Richard Hofstetter called the leap from the undeniable to the unbelievable. Simon reflected on the conspiracies he'd entertained, although he admitted he'd still not necessarily want to have an approved vaccine against coronavirus in the future. <laughs> I don't know, I, th I think that it might make me think twice, but to me, I will always be open to the idea that there is, there's more than just what you're being told. Conspiracy theories aren't simply some kooky aspect of the internet. In the coming months, they risk undermining important public health messages. So if you or someone you know is entertaining conspiracies, it's worth starting the conversation.